who have been uh, with us for a number of minutes. Thank you as we organize our connectivity with our um, esteemed guest from all the way from Russia. So thank you, uh, Dr. Vladimir Kozin. My name is Patricia Maria Weinman and I'm the Associate Coordinator of RADIUS at MIT. It's my pleasure to welcome all of you here. For a full listing of this semester long seminar program, please visit our website at radius.mit.edu. I would now like to introduce Subrata Gashroy, a longtime colleague and good friend of ours at Radius. Subrata is the organizer of this seminar and will act as moderator. Subrata is a former US Congressional Science Fellow and a member of the professional staff of the US House Armed Service Committee. In addition to his position as a research affiliate in MIT's program in science, technology, and society, he's currently a visiting professor at the Tokyo Institute of Technology. And again, Subrata will now introduce our esteemed guest, Dr. Vladimir Kozin. Thank you for being here. Thank, thank you, uh, Trish, uh, for the introduction. Um, just a few words about um, uh, before we uh, start uh, uh, Vladimir's presentation. Um, we uh, organized this seminar, of course, on um, very limited resources, but with tremendous help from people like Trish Weinman, uh, Patricia Weinman, who, is, who just spoke, uh, Christina English, who is also online, uh, are the two people who made this really possible. And also my program, Science, uh, Technology, and Society at MIT, um, the head of the department of the program is Dr. Jennifer Light. And Jennifer was very kind to give us a very small uh, financial support uh, to help this along. So um, we have a, a long series, a semester long. And today is really the kickoff with um, uh, uh, Vladimir at such an important topic. You can go visit uh, our website at the radius.mit.edu and get a, um, uh, a glimpse of all these seminars that are, will be going on. We had one on Kashmir last week, but this is really the beginning of the main series, a sort of uh, Tuesday lunchtime brown bag, where you can bring your own brown bag to the lunch. And um, so um, we have today uh, 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 Vladimir uh, Kozin, who is one of the most uh, respected Soviet and Russian analyst uh, today on international affairs. And um, Vladimir has very long experience in international affairs. He's a corresp corresponding member of two Russian academies, and he advises the highest levels of decision-making and foreign policy in the Duma and in Kremlin, uh, and, and, spe and specializing also on the US-Russia uh, relations. So we are at such a juncture uh, with the US-Russia uh, relations, especially with the nuclear weapons. I will just um, try to make a few comments. Uh, I would say that the world has reached perhaps one of the most dangerous points in the history of the nuclear weapons. Anybody familiar with the Bolton of the Atomic Scientists would know that this doomsday clock has moved ever closer to the doomsday. Um, Russia ceased to be a communist state three decades ago, but in Washington, that news hasn't reached. We are still fighting the old nemesis of the Cold, Cold War era. There's no doubt that Russian national security interests and US national security interests or global interests don't uh, gel or don't coincide all, uh, all the time. And there are serious conflicts with Russia in Syria, in Eastern Europe, like in, in Belarus today, in Ukraine and uh, Armenia, and there's several hotspots. Uh, but that does not mean we cannot manage these conflicts like we manage with other countries. Let me just give you one point of reference that Russia is not the Soviet Union. It doesn't have the power and the global reach of the, of the former Soviet Union. It has a military budget that's $60 mil billion, six zero. 
the US military budget this year is going to be $740 billion, 12 times more than, than the Russian. So this big Russian bear is actually quite small. And, <clears throat> but yet, what, where do we find ourselves in this continuing Cold War battle? We do not have any nuclear treaty. The, the last surviving one is the New START Treaty, which is about to expire in February, and from all, and, 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 and um, Vladimir will talk about it, of course. And uh, we do not have the INF Treaty. We have a tremendous crisis with the Non-Proliferation Treaty with uh, discrimination going on with members of the Non-Proliferation Treaty, like Iran, who is punished with sanctions, whereas countries like India or Pakistan, or of course, Israel, are treated very favorably. And finally, there is another thing that is going on beyond um, people's, it's, it's off the radar, so to speak, is the missile defense deployment. And I have just written about the problems with the missile defense in the uh, last issue of the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists and you, you, about the kind of money we have spent on a totally ineffective, inappropriate uh, system that is wasting so much money and, and causing so much trouble with Russia and China. So you, you, will, you will hear all about all of this. And um, so without, because um, uh, Vladimir is in, a, is in a little bit difficult situation because he's visiting his mother in Kaliningrad. So he's not in his regular place of work in Moscow. And we have some issues uh, with the connection. So I will stop here. There'll be plenty to discuss. And I will turn it over to uh, Dr. Vladimir Kozin. Well, uh, my dear colleagues, Patricia and Subrata, well, thank you very much for your kind words and introduction. And thank you for organizing this uh, uh, webinar for the first time between our communities, because between our academic circles. And I'm very happy to take part in it. In my introduction, I would like to uh, tackle some uh, burning issues, especially in arms control, and would be very happy to respond to any of your questions, even uh, if they are uh, very difficult to respond. Well, I would like to ask you, uh, Subrata, to open uh, the first uh, slide of mine, uh, which uh, describes uh, 13, 1, 3 uh, major differences existing in arms control uh, between uh, Moscow and Washington currently. This is a very uh, big stock. It uh, has, uh, this list uh, has uh, what not, uh, the possibility to extend uh, a uh, new start uh, accord, which is uh, nearly possible, actually impossible, I should stress. It's also deployment of tactical nuclear weapons of the United States and Europe. Uh, it's also a desire to deploy uh, newly emerged INF uh, nuclear tip missiles in Europe and in Asia. Also, the problem uh, dealing with the low-yield uh, nuclear warheads. Uh, too many patrols of uh, U.S. heavy bombers in Europe uh, and uh, the existing of uh, medium-range uh, dual-capable aircraft in terms of uh, uh, special air force uh, operation of NATO called Baltic Air Policing, which started in March uh, 2004 in three Baltic republics. Plus, uh, there is no commitment between our two giant nuclear powers uh, to commit uh, to no first use or no first strike of nuclear weapons versus each other. Uh, there is another uh, issue related to INC Accord, which is Incidents at Sea Prevention Agreement, 
which uh, does not cover uh, any type of uh, submarines while submerged. Uh, there is an issue dealing with the potential ratification of the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty by the United States. We have done it uh, 2000 years ago, in the year 2000. Uh, there is also issue concerning missile defense system. And uh, colleague Subrata, you mentioned this fact. Uh, it's a double-headed uh, system which uh, can uh, use uh, both offensive and defensive uh, systems at the same time, in the same tubes. There is also uh, a possibil no possibility of, uh, mm, uh, of signing of uh, con conventional forces in Europe treaty, number two, second variant. And uh, dealing with the outer space, there is a problem of uh, signing uh, prevention of arms race in outer space and uh, no first uh, placement of weapons in space. Uh, so could you please uh, turn uh, the slides show to the second one? Uh, uh, there are 13 arms control treaties and agreements uh, existing on, on the bilateral or multilateral basis either between us, between the United States and the Russian Federation, and uh, on the world uh, at large. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we are witnessing that uh, a number of cases of violating this kind of treaties, especially INF Treaty, which was violated, uh, we have counted, by the United States 117 times during the last 20 uh, years of its existence. Also withdrawal of uh, our American uh, colleagues uh, from uh, the INF Treaty itself and um, from Iranian nuclear deal as well. Uh, there is a lack of desire to ratify a number of treaties and I have mentioned uh, the CTBT or Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty. And the final brush, uh, uh, the refusal of Washington to uh, debate with us a number of um, other uh, uh, draft uh, treaties in the sphere of arms control, namely European Security Treaty and um, the treaty of uh, putting some limits on uh, missile defense systems, not to send it very close to uh, the territory of the opposing numbers. Uh, please, uh, next slide. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I have mentioned this uh, uh, slide already, made a comment on this slide. So please uh, open up uh, the second one, next one, please. Uh, it's called uh, 14 reasons of using nuclear weapons. Unfortunately, I must confess uh, that while, while uh, uh, reading very attentively uh, the existing NPR or Nuclear Posture Review signed in 2018, I have found out that uh, the current US military strategy has uh, 14 cases or reasons or pretexts of using nuclear weapons while the Russian Federation has only two. Uh, out of these uh, 14 cases of using nuclear weapons, uh, six of them are quite understandable. Uh, if you look uh, on the upper level of this slide, you will see that they are, are quite um, uh, workable because in response uh, to prevent attacks, etc., etc. But unfortunately, in the second uh, half of this uh, chart, you will see a rather a vague uh, uh, formula or sentences uh, permitting the United States to use na nuclear weapons under rather rubber, rubber uh, 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 excuses 
uh, I mean, rubber uh, excuses that can be interpreted or extended indefinitely and very loosely. Uh, for example, uh, operational shortfalls or during unexpected challenges or due to technical ch challenges or due to technological breakthroughs outside uh, the United States. But what kind of them? We cannot still understand what is behind of these vague uh, sentences, uh, pretexts, and formulas. So next slide, please. I have mentioned already uh, the INF Treaty. Unfortunately, the treaty, which uh, existed a, a long time ago, uh, does not exist. But we would like to revive it, to revive it uh, with the United States on a new ground. Not to, not to emplace the same kind of nuclear weapons in Europe or in Asia on the basis of reciprocity. Next slide, please. Next. Yeah, uh, waiting for the next slide. Yes, this chart uh, shows uh, who uh, has violated the INF Treaty and how many times. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Uh-huh. Look, it's a very dangerous uh, situation in nuclear arms control because a number of so-called non-strategic uh, or tactical nuclear warheads, namely from uh, B-61 family, exactly B-61-7, 11, and uh, the newcomer uh, 12, B-61-12, are considered both uh, at the Pentagon and the State Department as um, tactical or non-strategic and at the same time strategic uh, nuclear weapons if they are carried, if they are loaded on board of heavy strategic bombers, which uh, has a uh, much longer uh, flying distance rather than medium range uh, dual capable aircraft. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Okay. Look, uh, what we have, what we have uh, currently, I will summarize. Where do we stand now? Look, last century we called uh, a century of nuclear age when nuclear weapons appeared. Currently we have nine nuclear weapon states. But today, in the, in the current century, we are witnessing two, uh, two uh, types of other arms control, other arms race uh, uh, phenomena, namely uh, arms race in outer space and uh, appearance of uh, hypersonic, high-tech, hypersonic weapon which can be, uh, can perform also strategic missions. So uh, at the end of my uh, remarks, I would like to suggest to all of you seven potential ways what to do, uh, seven, uh, seven steps to uh, ameliorate the situation. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Uh, yeah. Uh, just omit it again. Next slide, please. Again, next, 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 next. Okay, in yellow, right? Yes, leave it. Seven potential steps. Uh, yes, seven potential steps. What to do, uh, first of all, by our two great nations the United States of America and the Russian Federation. The first step out of this seven is very simple. It, cause, it will cost nothing to us. It's a commitment of no first use or no first strike of nuclear weapons against each other. <clears throat> we have already made a, a step forward in this direction. When in mid-90s, we have uh, signed uh, together <clears throat> on bilateral basis uh, detargeting agreements, meaning that we do not target our nuclear missiles, strategic uh, missiles first and foremost, 
to the respective territories of each other. So why not to commit to no first use or no first strike uh, weapons uh, uh, as a sample or as example to other nuclear weapon states? As to uh, extension of uh, uh, the new start, uh, the recently the U.S. Uh, official delegation uh, put forward uh, three preconditions uh, for the potential extension of the new start. The first uh, precondition was dealt with the additional uh, verification mechanism. Uh, the second was dealt with the uh, proliferation of the commitment of the New START uh, Accord to tactical nuclear weapons. And the third one to uh, ask the People's Republic of China to join our talks on the potential uh, reduction of uh, strategic offensive arms. I have to confess, my dear colleagues, that uh, Moscow has declined these three preconditions because they are unacceptable. First of all, we have not uh, heard any detailed explanation what does it mean three preconditions. Uh, second factor is that uh, uh, we have already agreed to a vast range of uh, uh, verification mechanism applied uh, to our uh, strategic offensive nuclear arms. Uh, look, uh, there is disparity in this uh, inspections because uh, the Russian Federation has uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles on mobile installations, so mobile ICBMs, while the United States of America doesn't have this mobile ICBMs, only fixed uh, ICBMs on the ground. Uh, second issue, tactical nuclear weapons. We will confront with this issue from many angles. The first angle is that there is no proper and agreeable definition of tactical nuclear weapons. We currently have seven different uh, definitions of uh, tactical nuclear weapons. The second uh, factor is that the United States uh, doesn't want to withdraw its uh, all tactical nuclear weapons uh, from European countries plus Asian part of Turkey. And there is also a problem dealt with the tactical nuclear weapons. What to do with the delivery systems uh, carrying this uh, T and W? Shall we uh, proliferate uh, the new accord on uh, uh, medium range uh, tactical uh, aircraft or only for strategic offensive heavy bombers? So this is the end of my uh, preface, my preliminary remark, and I will be uh, happy to listen to your comments and to put me uh, any questions you so desire, uh, however sharp or pricky they might be. <laughs> yes, I would be very happy uh, to answer them all. Please go ahead. Th thank you. I uh, may ask you to, to speak um, uh, very uh, uh, slowly because of the time difference and uh, big uh, difference uh, in terms of distance between us and uh, the city of Kaliningrad on the Baltic Sea coast. Yes, I'm ready. Th thank My you. My colleague Sobrata, please go ahead. Thank Patricia, you. Patricia, uh, please. Hey. Thank you, Vladimir. At this time, we have no questions, but for our audience, there is a Q&A option on this webinar, and please do type in your questions. Okay, mm -hmm. so now that we are, we have, first of all, thank you, Vladimir, for um, making very uh, concise and um, um, relatively brief, but concise presentation with a lot of information for people to mm -hmm. digest. My um, pleasure, Sobrata. Um, one of the uh, things that, of course, uh, are um, talked about here are, like, you have listed the uh, Russian 
view of the violations of the INF uh, about the tactical nuclear weapons and, mm -hmm. and so forth. And the US has also its view of Russian violations. Is there uh, anything uh, you want to add about the why Russia does not consider the US um, 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 allegations of Russian violations, especially in regards to the um, missiles deployed in near in, in Kaliningrad and, um, and um, a, a cruise missiles and, um, and, and other things related to INF and the tactical mm -hmm. nuclear weapons. The uh, US position is that we do not know how many tactical nu nuclear weapons really are possessed by Russia and that yeah. there's, is, 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 and so uh, the 200 or so that we have now in Europe, in Turkey, yeah. uh -huh. uh, we have a count and we do not have a count on, uh, on, the, on, on, the, on the Russian side. And the third thing I would say, if uh, this is unrelated, is some comments about the situation in outer space, because we had a, a, a Russian test, or as the US is calling it, a, a Russian anti-satellite test in, um, in July, or I forget now which month, but yeah, yeah, yeah. it was, yeah. uh, and Russia is calling it an, uh, an inspection satellite, and the US is saying Russia fired a projectile. So it'll be great to hear some of these things directly from, uh, yeah, from your, uh, your point of view. Thank you. Yeah, so brother, you have already stockpiled me with a lot of questions, but let's start from the very beginning. Well, as to the Kaliningrad uh, Russian exclave I am now sitting in, uh, it's up to us to decide what kind of uh, missiles to deploy on our own territory. Second uh, issue is that uh, uh, very close to the Kaliningrad uh, region, uh, in Poland, uh, we are uh, witnessing the continuation of construction of missile defense uh, operational base in uh, Etredzikovo, near Slupsk, uh, in the uh, relatively speaking uh, up north part of Poland, very close to the Baltic Sea. We also uh, have uh, spotted uh, uh, that uh, the U.S. heavy bombers used uh, Polish airfield uh, to uh, to stay for a while and then go to uh, very close to the Russian borders, uh, especially in the near the Black Sea and uh, the Azov Sea. As to tactical nuclear weapons, uh, well, these figures. Uh, you have mentioned, and many experts are mentioning yesterday and today, and will mention tomorrow, uh, are not so reliable, simply because neither Moscow or Washington have already exchanged official data concerning tactical nuclear weapons. We only uh, were able uh, to identify the percentage of the downside of tact downsized of tactical nuclear weapons from unknown level of tactical nuclear weapons. But as soon as we uh, start uh, forging a new treaty uh, on uh, downsizing or on limiting uh, tactical nuclear weapons, uh, naturally, we will exchange this kind of data when, for example, we have done while uh, uh, we have signed uh, the INF Treaty, we identified both uh, shorter range and medium range nuclear missiles, as well as uh, when we uh, have uh, reached uh, agreements on uh, uh, offensive, uh, on the strategic offensive arms, limitations, and then the reductions from salt to start. So uh, the problem will be, as I said, that uh, uh, ge in geographical terms, our tactical nuclear weapons, our, I mean, the Russian Federation tactical nuclear weapons uh, are stored exclusively on the Russian territory. 
while the United States tactical weapons uh, bow is uh, deployed both in the Conus and outside the Conus in Europe, in the four uh, NATO member countries, Italy, Belgium, the Netherlands, and the Federal Republic of Germany, plus Asian part of Turkey. Yes, what to do with that? Uh, we still do not know, and we have not started any negotiations on tactical nuclear weapons. But in the future, we have to tackle this issue because it's in, uh, in the lineable part and parcel of the nuclear weapons uh, stockpile. As to uh, militarization of space, unfortunately, uh, this uh, issue has not been resolved so far. We were very happy when uh, uh, the ex-president uh, of the United States, Jimmy Carter, in 1970s initiated uh, Assad uh, reduction talks with us. But when we uh, covered uh, uh, four rounds of these negotiations, uh, the American delegation decided and informed us that they will not go to continue with such talks because the Russia, the Soviet side that time, Soviet Union was existing, uh, wanted to identify specific hostile acts in outer space that should be prohibited. But when we tabled this uh, kind of category uh, of uh, terminology and uh, the description of such acts, violent acts, unfriendly acts, the United States uh, simply canceled these talks for good, forever. They have never been uh, repeated again. As to using uh, Assad weapons by uh, a number of uh, spacefaring nations, because of the non-existence non -existence of Assad uh, limitations, any nation in the world uh, having special uh, facilities in space can use uh, ASAT capabilities because there are no limitations. But when the limitations uh, are uh, forged or uh, hammered out, certainly there should be limitations on ASAT systems. And our uh, motto is very simple, uh, to prohibit systems uh, that can hit space-based uh, assets and to, to uh, control and prohibit systems uh, that uh, are based in outer space but can be used against target targets uh, located on the earth, on the ground or in the air or in the atmosphere on, or in the world oceans. So, but all these issues have not been uh, resolved yet. And I have mentioned 13 unresolved issues. This, this is too, too much. Unfortunately, uh, when uh, the Russian President Vladimir Putin uh, tabled an offer to all five nuclear uh, powers uh, to organize a special meeting uh, at the premises of the current U.S. Uh, General Assembly session in New York City, but uh, this idea has not been uh, implemented simply simply because uh, of the coronavirus uh, uh, infection. Uh, many many uh, uh, world leaders, including uh, uh, the uh, uh, leaders of uh, P5 made uh, video uh, prepared uh, uh, statements uh, from the screen at the UN General Assembly session. But this is not a nuclear summit to tackle this uh, nuclear arms control issues. But uh, uh, the human race uh, sooner or later should start debating this issue. Look, uh, last August, uh, a new surge of anti-nuclear movement has appeared. It uh, drafted a special appeal uh, addressed to all nine nuclear weapon states to dismantle and destroy all nuclear weapons 
uh, globally and irreversibly by the August 6, 2045, a centenary of using nuclear weapons uh, 100 years ago in 1945 by the United States uh, against uh, Japan. Uh, well, I have uh, seen that uh, this appeal uh, has already collected uh, nearly 10,000 uh, signatures, uh, both from individuals and from various uh, NGOs. But that's not too much. And I'm very concerned that uh, so not so big uh, number of people uh, has, uh, have subscribed to this appeal which is logical and very simple, and it has been uh, already translated into uh, several foreign uh, languages, besides uh, English, French, Russian, Chinese, uh, Korean, uh, Hebrew, uh, Hindi, uh, excuse me, Urdu, uh, uh, French as well, and German, while well, it devotes uh, special attention. That's probably, I have finished uh, my response to your questions, uh, my dear colleagues, Brata. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. We, have, we do have some questions. There's a follow-up in the space weapons arena. And mm -hmm. someone asks, how about an international understanding or agreement prohibiting attacks by every country on any, quote, asset, unquote, in space delivered by the launching country at the time of the launch to be declared a non-military asset with full details of its purpose and parameters. Would that be a practical way to proceed in terms of being specific rather than general? Yes, it should be tackled uh, and a special agreement uh, during special talks between uh, spacefaring nations that have uh, uh, capabilities to launch uh, such uh, satellites or such uh, assets in outer space. And there are two questions regarding China. The US, okay. the US nuclear powered warship strategy is almost entirely to address the Chinese nuclear and missile forces and much less against Russia. So the best solution is the best solution is that Russia persuades and pressures China to join a new INF treaty or other arms control talks. Mm -hmm. Yes, clear. thank you very much. As to the People's Republic of China, the response is very simple. Uh, if compared with the strategic offensive arms of the uh, Russian Federation on one hand, and the same number of strategic offensive arms of the United States of America, that is uh, under the current uh, New START Treaty, is, uh, has the ceiling of uh, 1,550 uh, warheads and uh, uh, 700 operational deployed uh, delivery systems. Uh, the Chinese side has only 300 of such uh, capabilities, so five times less than any of us. So their position is crystal clear. Uh, we together, Washington and Moscow, first have to limit our SOA assets to the ceilings uh, the People's, Repu People's Republic of China currently has. The second uh, uh, story uh, related to this issue, Russia cannot persuade the People's, uh, People's Republic of China to join uh, the respective uh, arms control talks. Look, Washington has imposed anti-Russian sanctions against uh, several hundred uh, enterprises, against several hundred of individuals. Look, if a person just, uh, just, uh, just deliver you a blow into your face, how can you help those person to 
resolve his own issues with the other colleagues. So it's uh, not a proper uh, behavior uh, asking us uh, from Washington to use our authority and our uh, uh, excellent relationship with Beijing because in the, like in the human uh, world, in the human communication, uh, any offender of, uh, uh, of yourself cannot ask you to help the offender in his uh, difficult situation. He uh, or she uh, just came into booby trap created by himself or herself. So that's, that's uh, our view. And uh, uh, as to the new uh, START treaty, the People's Republic of China cannot physically be included into the new, the existing uh, new START because it's a very limited time left uh, before it, it will die out. It will expire on the 5th of February next year. As to start uh, the next, the newest uh, start after uh, the uh, dead of um, uh, start uh, three in Russian or the new start, it's a, it's a big question. But uh, uh, the People's Republic of China definitely will wait till we agree to the further uh, reductions of strategic offensive arms. When we agree to the limitations of uh, missile defense system. And we, when Washington and Moscow agree uh, for a restrained policy in outer space, not to weaponize it, uh, and to use it exclusively for um, peaceful purposes. I'm not talking about a prohibition uh, of, uh, so to say, so to say uh, non-combat uh, military uh, vehicles in outer space, uh, like working for navigational system, for traffic control, for uh, assessing har har harvesting, etc., uh, communication satellites, which are actually innocent. They cannot kill the respective uh, satellites at all. But what we are talking, we are against of emplacement of a space-based strike combat assets in outer space because it will create a, a, a mess not only on the uh, in, in space but on the earth as well. Studio. Thank, thank Patricia? you. Patricia. Yes, thank you. My pleasure. We have a, a question I think which is on many of our minds. Do you expect? any improvement in the situation with a change of an administration in Washington? No, unfortunately, I must confess, no, I, it's my personal opinion, no, I don't think that uh, uh, after your presidential elections, uh, God permits uh, will be held on the 3rd of November this year. Any person who will be elected by the uh, Americans will continue anti-Russian policy for many decades to come. It doesn't matter who will win, the Republican uh, candidate or the Democratic Party uh, candidate. The policy will be the same. And uh, I don't know uh, what uh, our great nations uh, have to do to change this uh, cul-de-sac position, deadlocked position, very difficult impasse we are still uh, confronted. When we are uh, uh, at the risk of unleashing not only a limited a local nuclear war, but an all-out war, which will destroy the civilization completely, entirely. It doesn't matter who will start this nuclear attack, the first or the second or the third, etc. Nine nuclear powers on our planet is too much. We have to do something. Thank you. 
Someone is asking about what specific circumstances does Russia envision when its nuclear weapons would be used? Would it only be in retaliation of a nuclear attack against it or also perhaps a chemical or biological attack? Uh, we are against of using nuclear weapons in the first strike. Our uh, updated, uh, current, currently and recently updated uh, nuclear strategy uh, clearly stated that we are uh, against uh, using nukes uh, 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 as the first blow and uh, in the, in the first uh, attack. Uh, I mean, we can use only as a retaliation as the second strike in defense uh, in two actually cases. When we are uh, attacked by a nuclear uh, weapon state, we have not identified what kind of them, uh, or we uh, also will retaliate if uh, we are attacked by using non-nuclear or conventional weapons conventional purpose, but with uh, only with only specific excuse when this conventional attack will endanger the very existence of the Russian state. But uh, uh, in the in the last uh, century, we have not uh, witnessed uh, uh, such uh, attempts to, to uh, destroy Russia completely after the invention and uh, uh, construction and deployment of nuclear weapons after 1945. And we will be very unhappy if uh, any of us from nine nuclear weapon states will use nuclear weapons even in a limited, uh, very limited uh, nuclear strike against each other. That's why we are still committed to no first use commitment or no first strike commitment signed by Washington and Moscow. By the way, we, we are having this uh, no first uh, strike clause with the People's Republic of China and uh, the uh, and two uh, NATO nuclear allies of the United States, namely the United Kingdom and uh, France, you have also uh, no uh, non-first use of nuclear weapons between each other because you are allies. You're a formidable allies, uh, very close uh, comrades in arms. So that's it, Patricia. Thank you. I, I, I would like to ask a question for, for both of you, I think. This dire situation between the two nations, what could change that dynamic? What is possible? Uh, there are several ways to improve the situation. First of all, grassroots people, rank and file people all over the world should persuade the governments in their own countries and the countries outside uh, their borders to live in peace uh, and to avoid any confrontation, any hostilities, anything uh, that could uh, suddenly uh, trigger on uh, a wide uh, or wide scale uh, conventional war or nuclear war. Second, uh, the world leaders, including nine all nuclear weapon states, after the end of this uh, coronavirus uh, infection, should sit together and communicate with each other, not from the screen of a TV, but uh, eye to eye in tete a tete atmosphere and to persuade each other and to start to, to open a new chapter in the current civilization. We have to save the succeeding generations uh, from any scourge of wars. 
if I may paraphrase uh, the UN Charter. But uh, we have uh, sit and talk very frankly with figures, with arguments, with only one mandate and commitment. Let's change the world for the better. We do not deserve any hostilities, any wars, any conflicts at all. We have to uh, leave uh, this wonderful world to our children, to our grandchildren, etc., etc., totally new, totally peaceful, and uh, uh, fighting only for the well being, fighting poverty, fighting uh, bad medical treatment, uh, uh, lack of uh, resources. Uh, fighting for better climatic conditions, etc., etc. But let's forget hostilities, wars, hatred, uh, lack of trust, lack of confidence. Let it be human in all this positive uh, 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 connotation and feeling. Let let us be all 100% real homo sapiens, human beings. Patricia? Thank you. Uh, someone is asking, what American interest is served, in your opinion, by U.S. reluctance to no first use, even before the changes in nuclear postures were made by the Trump administration? Uh, unfortunately, the current uh, nuclear posture review of the United States uh, does not permit even to tackle this issue completely. So uh, I don't know. It's not very easy to change this wording uh, in the uh, current uh, nuclear posture review, but probably in uh, several years to come, any future uh, American president, be it Republican person or from diplomatic party, will change this kind of uh, <clears throat> uh, political obligation and military formula. But currently, seemingly, uh, I don't see such a possibility at all. Patricia, yeah, uh, Sobrata? Yeah, I, I, I think that uh, that's very correct, that uh, it, it, it's also somewhat bureaucratic in the military that this has been the policy and um, this belief that um, uh, we don't want to constrain ourselves, that is the United States, in mm -hmm. any way whatsoever, whether it is the development of the missile defense systems or any other of weapons, that we, we, don't want, we don't want any constraints on our abilities. And, uh, and, and they will also say that this so-called uh, NFU or uh, no first use pledge is not worth the paper it's written on. So mm -hmm. nuclear war, uh, if one wants to start, will start regardless of whatever pledge or um, um, uh, even treaties uh, we have. Because if we are, if we feel our national security is at, is a grave a threat, then we will use whatever capabilities we have. And we often threaten the use of nuclear weapons, even in mm -hmm. smaller scales and whatever. So I think it's very much uh, married into the US national security thinking and doctrine about this. Uh, we don't want to give this up, this no first use. And there is, as you correctly point out, that we, it can only change if nuclear weapons enters into the vocabulary, into the conversation. This election campaign is going on. Um, obviously, it's dominated by pandemic and mask or no mask. Uh, mm -hmm. But we do not hear anything about nuclear weapons or the crisis we are facing with Russia in this regard. I mean, of course, there is a lot of uh, vilifying of Russia uh, in, in many respects, and, and I'm not going to hold the brief for Russian president or its policies, but at mm -hmm. the same time, this is a constant in American politics in this election with the 
cyber interference, cyber attacks on Democratic mm -hmm. National Committee and, and so forth. So I, I just want to uh, just want to um, uh, have a little positive uh, note in that. And I was thinking about it, I, that even at the height of the Cold War, the dialogue on nuclear weapons, arms control did not talk, did not stop. And mm -hmm. this, the greatest example was the Kissinger Nixon um, back channel through Anatoly Dobrynin, the Soviet mm -hmm. ambassador uh, in Washington. Yes, right. And right. then the culmination of Nixon visiting Moscow in 1972 and signing the um, ABM treaty with uh, General Secretary Brezhnev. So, yes. this, but this is a very different situation when we have no communication. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Yes, we are just uh, closing our session. May I have uh, my final remarks? Oh, yes. please, we well, have actually my, time, my, but you are going into the dark, so I understand. Yeah, Let's yeah, yeah. May, um, idea, I ask, uh, may I ask one more question from yes, someone please do, who's, Patricia, been, come who's on. been waiting here? The Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons adopted in 2017 will yes. enter into force 90 days after it's been ratified by at least 50 countries and regions. According to ICANN, four additional signatories can be expected shortly. What effect do you expect this to have on the situation going forward? Well, it would be very nice if uh, the treaty uh, you mentioned, uh, treaty on the prohibition of nuclear weapons, uh, will be enacted and will uh, uh, will enter into existence, because uh, sooner or later. Uh, the uh, human race will understand that there is no uh, uh, calm and quiet life sitting on nuclear powder keg. And people will understand that uh, sooner or later uh, uh, nuclear weapons should be uh, dismantled, destroyed, and with a pledge not to reinvent or reproduce it once again. Uh, there are uh, some other non-nuclear weapons that can guarantee uh, deterrence based on non-nuclear weapons. And I would like to remind uh, uh, the uh, address of uh, the Republican, by the way, President uh, Ronald Reagan at Los Angeles uh, uh, Town Hall in the year 1983 to resort to, to make a transition to defensive deterrence that threatens no one. And I should add, based on non-nuclear weapons, based on non-other weapons of mass destruction. That will be absolutely clear statement and clear uh, remedy the world community may adopt very quickly. But uh, one more uh, 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 comment uh, to this uh, uh, treaty on prohibition of nuclear weapons. Look, nobody from all nine nuclear weapon states have already subscribed uh, to that treaty at all. Without their participation, the treaty will does not exist properly. It will exist, uh, actually, but it will not work. So let's persuade all nine nuclear weapon states to uh, ratify and to agree to abolish and eliminate nuclear weapons for good, irreversibly and globally, by stages, verifiably, under strict international control. Patricia? Patricia? Sobrata? Yes. Yes. Uh, someone is asking, would Russia be more accepting of U.S. BMDS if the U.S. adopted a no first use, no first strike policy? 
Uh, you mean uh, ballistic missile defense system? Yes. Yeah. Uh, it, well, it's an interwoven uh, issue, uh, but it should be uh, uh, resolved together, simultaneously with each other, as a as a as a as a issue uh, which uh, is having interoperability and uh, very close links. Because uh, in uh, May 2012, NATO member countries in Chicago has invented the Chicago Triad, so to say. It's my invention. It's not an official ter terminology. The Chicago Triad consists of uh, nuclear weapons, uh, missile defense, and conventional forces. So these uh, three uh, giants or three legs of weaponry should be debated and resolved all together as one, as a one unit, not separately, not uh, one by one. Patricia? Uh, if this is going back again to the U.S. position on foregoing that option to uh, not agree to first use. And the, the questioner would like to know, so Subrata, they thanked you very much, but the questioner would like to know Vladimir's perception of why the U.S. thinks or states that it wants to forego the option. Uh, you mean on no first use? Yes. Well, it's a, it's a mentality of the uh, former and current U.S. leadership, both political and military. It's a traditional posture of the United States government from 1945. And I don't know how to persuade them uh, to be more rational, to be uh, more uh, creative and flexible in... Uh, uh, resorting to uh, Ronald Reagan formula in Los Angeles uh, uh, town hall to uh, resort to uh, defensive uh, deterrence that threatens no one. Probably we together can do it. <laughs> All of us sitting again and again and persuade. By the way, I have uh, written a, a book uh, 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 evolution of the U.S. Uh, strategic and tactical nuclear weapons and its uh, their em employment in the 21st century. It has uh, 1,200 uh, uh, pages. I can share it with the President uh, Ronald, uh, 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 Donald Trump, sorry, uh, of any future American president, free of charge as an intellectual souvenir. <laughs> yes, probably it will be very helpful. It has uh, a lot of stories uh, uh, describing the U.S. nuclear capabilities. <laughs> yeah, send that with a little bit of caviar. Okay, and vodka. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah. uh, uh, let me ask you, uh, 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 Vladimir, I know you have gone completely dark in Kaliningrad and it's maybe difficult, but we do have a little more time and there may be a couple of more questions that could be, since we have you, is it possible for you to continue 10-15 uh, minutes or that's too much? Okay, yeah, yeah, yes, please go ahead. Okay, thank you. Trish, are there any other questions? Uh, not a question. There is a request for more information for your book, about your book, Vladimir. So if you could send that to me, I will post it on the website. Thank you. Uh, well, unfortunately, Patricia, it's a commercial project. We cannot share it electronically by the internet. Only as a, as a hard uh, copy. Uh, as a paper. Are copies uh, available in the U.S.? Yes, in the form of a uh, book uh, only. Yes. 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 Why, why not? But not electronically, unfortunately, because it uh, costed, uh, uh, costed us uh, a lot, uh, because it is not only in Russian, it, is, uh, uh, it has been printed in English as well. Perfect. English option uh, exists as well. 
All right. If you could send that information, we'll post it for our. Oh video. yes, yes. Uh, I mean, the brief context, uh, contest, uh, context. Uh, well, uh, and some other details. Why? Why not? Why not? It's Thanks. it's quite possible. But let uh, <laughs> me come back to Moscow again because I am. Uh, I lack uh, all my facilities. Only a smartphone. Yeah. But yes, never thank you so I, much, uh, Vladimir, for doing this uh, despite this uh, very difficult situation uh, from your uh, travels. But I, uh, since you have agreed to spend a little more time, there are two things I wanted to be, uh, to be clarify. Yes, please go ahead, Sobrata. Your comment that uh, Russia is interested in reviving the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty, IMF Treaty, and uh, yes, 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 in sir. that regard, uh, obviously you have explained why uh, uh, the Chinese do not want to enter into any kind of negotiations, but are you contemplating a multilateral treaty or a modification of the existing bilateral treaty with some clarifications? But uh, I think that we have to start first uh, uh, between Moscow and Washington together. Uh, uh, first, uh, just uh, to show example of goodwill and the commitment to not to deploy this kind of weapons anywhere on the on the globe, uh, as we have already agreed in uh, 1987 INF uh, treaty. Uh, who knows? Uh, probably after this uh, step forward other INF uh, capable country will join us. But without our first steps, uh, American and Russian steps in this direction, nobody will uh, agree to, to invent uh, a multilateral INF treaty. Thank you. Uh, second point was uh, regarding, you know, it's famously said that uh, Soviet Union collapsed because of the economic burden brought on by the US uh, Star Wars program, which was a colossal no. west, uh, waste, but they say that's one of the reasons Soviet Union collapsed. But so now Russia, as I pointed out in the beginning, has a, a minuscule budget compared to the United States. And mm -hmm. uh, of course it has the technical capabilities. So my question is, uh, how is Russia contemplating uh, countering the U.S. buildup, both on the nuclear weapons with a trillion dollar budget for the 30 years and, and the, a, a grand uh, scale expansion of the missile defense. How is Russia going to counter this? Because it cannot obviously do what it did before in, in creating an arms race. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Sobrata. There are two options. First of all, to modernize our strategic offensive arsenals and tactical nuclear weapons, plus invention and production and deployment of uh, pinpoint accuracy hypersonic weapons, uh, which uh, is a fantastic weapon and uh, can be also uh, used on non-nuclear uh, basis without nuclear charges. But it will nevertheless uh, uh, be a backbone of our non-nuclear deterrence policy. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, I, I think I've, I've exhausted my questions. Yes. Uh -huh. And any final question from anyone? Okay. So we want to thank you, Vladimir, again, once again, for doing this and, and and giving us all this analysis and information that are so vital that in terms of starting a better relations between Russia and uh, the United States, we, we, we have to have good information and not uh, mm -hmm. fake news uh, um, going back and forth. So we certainly hope. One thing I would say, a little positive, is, is Joe Biden did say the other day that if he is elected president, that he will definitely uh, extend the new start. He didn't say how long, although uh, 
uh, mm -hmm. but you will extend the new start and 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 start regular arms control discussions with with Russia. So that's at least it was said just two days ago. So I was at yeah. least pleased to hear that. Yeah. Just in response, uh, uh, my dear Patricia and Sobrata, well, thank you very much for your initiative, which is absolutely fantastic and uh, terrific. And for your uh, questions and comments and uh, for your introduction. Well, thank you very much indeed. God bless you, you and your family. And if uh, this uh, video show has been recorded, please send me afterwards the link of our conversation. And with your permission, we will place it on our website. Wonderful. On the I website will, of the Moscow that. State Institute of International Relations. Great. Uh, recently uh, uh, changed uh, its name into University. Moscow State University of International Relations. With Wonderful. great pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you My so pleasure. very much. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Take care. We'll be in touch, and Vladimir. Thank you, thank for, you. Uh, for the audience. Thank you. Thank you. Kind for regards to all of you. Yes, indeed. Good thank luck. you for yeah, good attending. Bye-bye. Yeah, cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank, you, yes, thank, thank you, audience members, for uh, yes, uh, taking part in this uh, very important discussion today. And we, yeah. will, post, we will post a recording uh, within a day. Mm. Yes, thank you very good much questions. indeed. Thank yes, you. Goodbye. Take yes. good care. Ciao. Hi, Ciao. take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> okay.